These are the kind of retro re-releases I love. Not a real re-release at all. A game that was never released to begin with, but was shelved after development and testing back in 1992, 93-ish. Clockwork Aquario was meant to release on the Sega System 18 arcade board, but due to not doing well with location tests and really people turning more towards 3D style games at the time, it was just ultimately canceled. They shelved the game. It was meant to be the developer Wii Stone's final arcade game, and now after nearly 30 years, the game has been restored by NN Games with help from former Wii Stone developers and is being released on the PlayStation and Nintendo Switch. So Wii Stone may sound familiar to some as they have a long record of some awesome games. I mean, very long history there. They were the developer behind the Wonder Boy and Monster World franchises, and Clockwork Aquario definitely has a style reminiscent of some of those later releases in those franchises. So like previous in and game releases, this one has a similar presentation. You have several modes to choose from, mostly difficulty modes that limit how many credits you are allowed to use. That's really how they decipher difficulty, I guess. Now there's also a training mode that doesn't let you go past the first couple stages, but gives you unlimited credits, a bonus stage mode that you could play, which is multiplayer and is something that you would only encounter in the original game if you were playing two players. Uh, they also included access to the game's soundtrack with remixes and the original arrangement. They also give you a gallery of screenshots and artwork that, you know, some people may find valuable to take a look at. I thought it was pretty neat. Now, the final mode I want to mention, before we get into the game anyway, is the arcade mode. So this mode allows you to enter the service screen, change the dip switches around, some other little settings here and there. And it also allows you to insert credits to your heart's content, like as much as you want. Just keep continuing, right? So this mode, it, it does state you need to complete the game once on any difficulty to unlock it. But for me, for whatever reason, it was just unlocked from the get-go. I don't know, with some of these in-in releases, some of these modes that say they're supposed to be locked or never locked for me from the, you know, from the start. I'm not really complaining. I just kind of find it strange. But yeah, it is what it is there. Not not really complaining, like I said. Now, also with uh, previous retro re-releases from this company, you have a ton of display and shader options to choose from. This one even more so than some of their other uh, games that they've released. But the one thing I always point out is their shader options are some of the most comprehensive I have seen for a retro release on current generation hardware. A lot of stuff you can manipulate there if you're into shaders, it's really cool. I'm not too big on that kind of stuff. I just like seeing the sharp pixels, but they do have like a, a filter. You can kind of smooth it, razor sharp, that kind of thing. I, I think any of those options look really good. So now on to you know, what I think about the actual game. Now, Clockwork Aquario, it's a two player action platformer where you could select one of three characters. Huck Londo, L Moon, and a robot named Gush. So you got a dude, a girl, and a robot. But essentially they all play the same, so I guess it doesn't really matter who you choose, just whichever one you think looks coolest, I guess, right? So you have two buttons, one to attack and the other to jump. So you could jump on top of enemies or attack them. Everything seems to need two hits to kill them. One hit dazes the enemy, and if you touch them, you can pick them up and throw them to attack other enemies or pop the balloons for points or power-ups or whatever. Some of the bosses do require you to throw enemies at them. Some of the, the bosses you could just jump on top of or punch them, you know, whatever. There, there's a little bit of variety with the way you can uh, approach some of the bosses anyway. So your character as well takes two hits before dying. And I really liked how they have a, a visual cue that you've taken damage as your character sprite will change depending on if they have one or two hits remaining. Kind of similar like, you know, ghosts and goblins and whatnot. But you could see like your character's in distress if you've taken a hit. I, I thought that was uh, pretty cool with the uh, way they did that. So I, I really like the, the 2D animation style of this game. The bosses are really large. The backgrounds look really good. The music is decent. Nothing crazy memorable for me. I mean, music's always a, a very touchy thing for me. Yeah, some things just stick in your head. Nothing really here, you know, had a lasting impression on me, but it wasn't bad music by any means. Just, you know, nothing that was really impressionable for me anyway, memorable anyway, right? So with all that, it looks great, sounds great. The, you know, the, the, the gameplay 
can feel a little floaty, I guess, and it does take a little while to get used to how everything controls. I mean, there's only two buttons to use, but it, it does have a little floatiness to it and the way you could jump on things, bounce off of balloons and enemies and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, you gotta get used to it a little bit. And really the, the only negative I have to say about this game is that it's extremely short. It could be completed in under 30 minutes and really once you're accustomed to how the game plays and you just kind of get situated with all that, it, it's extremely easy. I mean, really easy. You could beat the game with like one or two credits if you're decent at it. it it's a very short and easy game. And I kind of wish it was a little longer, but you know, it, it is really awesome to see a game like this get, you know, released after all of these years. A game that was lost to time. I remember hearing about this, this game a while back. And then when I heard that it was coming out, it was like, cool, man. Always love to see stuff like this gaming's history, especially games that were never released. But some people may have heard of before finally coming out, getting restored and finished up and you know, putting a nice little package, right? It, it, it's really cool. I, I, I love stuff like this. I mean, if you're interested in this game, it is available on the Nintendo eShop in Europe. It just released today in Europe. And in North America, it's coming December 14th, 2021. There's also physical editions uh, on strictly limited games. It looks like their standards are sold out, but they have like little collector edition ones that are still available, all limited type stuff. Also notice there are uh, Asian releases on PlayAsia.com. That's I I'm kind of thinking about grabbing a physical copy of this game and I, I may just go to Play Asia to grab one. Uh, always some cool stuff there. But yeah, I, I really enjoyed this game. A little too short for me. Uh, I'm not 100% on the price. I think it's around $20 for this game. And for me, I think the sweet spot would have been a little lower than that digitally. But, you know, some people may just be like, hey, I, I mean, this is a piece of gaming history. I got to have it. $20 is cool. But I understand if some people think the price is a little much. But yeah, there you go. Enjoyable game, looks great, a lot of fun. Appreciate you guys watching, hanging out with me on this one. And I will catch you next time.